family y'all can you believe it we made it to december y'all we are in december y'all that means pretty soon we about to be in 2024 i want to hear some more we're gonna raise some more in 2024 come on somebody but first you already know my favorite tradition of our final webinar of the year it's all about you it's all about celebration it's all about finalizing and closing off the year and yes i know we're gonna do the most creative campaign but y'all i got some some tricks up my sleeve for all of y'all too we're gonna give away some custom never before seen swag to a lucky person in the house okay can i can you give it up for swag in the chat give it up for swag in the chat swag in the chat oh it's a song swag in the chat come on now swag in the chat hey child don't get me started because you already know you already know okay we love swag okay i've seen a lot of good swag okay i love it swag in the chat hey swag in the chat See, don't get me started, y'all. You know I can go forever, okay? Well, y'all, I am so excited to be here with you all. You already know who I am. And if you don't, I hope you get familiar. My name is Floyd Jones. Floyd with the capital Y today because I'm feeling the N J. I am from New York, New York. I'm the director of community here at Give Butter. I love working with small organizations. And y'all, have you heard the news? If you don't follow me on LinkedIn, I want you to check it out because I have some big news. I was just featured on LinkedIn for nonprofits, y'all. Over 300,000 people got to get some Floyd energy, okay? And it was so exciting. It was one of the, definitely the, the highlights of this quarter for me. So y'all, check it out. If you don't follow me on LinkedIn, come and join the party, y'all. Today, you already know the deal. You already know the things, okay? We're going to do some welcome and introductions. Y'all, my favorite person, High Value Holly, is in the house again, okay? And we have some really cool updates for you. I can't wait to share, you, share those with you. We're going to go over some year-end fundraising strategies. We're going to do our fabulous Give Butter Gives Back announcements, and then we're going to wrap this thing up. But first... Who is in the Give Butter fam? I do this every time, but it's so important, y'all. We have over 2,000 people in the fam. 2,000 people in the fam. Y'all, if you're in the Give Butter fam, I want to see it in the chat. Who is in the chat? Danielle is in the chat. Jill's in the chat. Margo's in the chat. Come on, y'all. Tammy said three years strong. I know that's right. Who else is in the chat? Who else is in the chat? I love to see it. Jo okay, sure. Okay, yes, we got all the people. I love it. I love it. I love it. Well, we are going to drop the link to join the Facebook fam in just a second. But y'all, if you are not in the Facebook fam, make sure you get in that group, y'all, because it goes down. We're doing donations. We are doing tips. We are doing tricks. And y'all, again, we are one big fam. So of course, we support one another. Okay, y'all, make sure you get familiar and make sure you get inside. Okay. Later, as I mentioned, we will announce the most creative campaigns. And y'all, one of my favorite things from last year was that we all rallied around our people. So when we announce the people who won later on today, I want you to give them the biggest shout. I want you to give them the, all the hearts, all the love, all the butter, okay? Because we are one big fam and I'm so excited for y'all to see them. But first, we got some amazing updates. So I want to bring, please help me wait to the stage, High Value Holly in the house. Holly. Floyd, you give me the best introductions every single time. I am so excited to be here. It's so good to see you, Holly. How are you? I am so good. It's so good to see you. I am stoked about these updates today, y'all. We are coming in hot for end of year. We are not slowing down. I love it. I love it. Okay, let us know. What's up, child? Let us know. All right. So first up of announcements coming soon is fundraising letters. So you already have that functionality that you know and love and engage, right? We have emails, we have the text messages. Now we're bringing in physical letters as well, y'all. So with these letters, you can use those same great filters and engage. So Livebunt, Cybunt, we can go ahead and use contact variables such as first name, last name, last donation amount. These are customizable to as far and wide as you want. So definitely use these for that end of year giving. We know that some of those older donors still love to get those letters and you can even plop a QR code right on there. All Next right, time. Next one. All right, this is one that has been long anticipated. Per ticket custom fields are coming, y'all. We are- Finally, so child. This is the thing we've all been asking for. 
Oh my gosh, they're coming so, so soon. So what this means is that you will get to add custom questions. I'm so sorry, my dog sees a person apparently. You will get to add in a custom question to your ticket. So you can ask someone's t-shirt size, their meal preference, whatever you need. You can go ahead and add that in to your custom ticket question. So, so excited about those. Those are coming really, really soon. And then the last update we have might be the most exciting is donation matching is almost here, y'all. Matching. Matching is coming. So what this means is you'll be able to show your progress towards a match on your Give Better campaigns. So as donors are making those donations, your goal bar and the updates are automatically going to show on your campaign page and that supporter feed will show those matched gifts as well. We are so, so excited about this one. Keep your eyes on our newsletters. These are all coming out really soon, y'all. Oh my gosh. Okay, which update are you most excited are you most excited about? Ooh, I'm most excited about per ticket custom fields. That is going to be a game changer for spring events, Floyd. I am so excited. I love it. I love it. I love it. And y'all already started doing it, but put it in the chat. I want to see what are y'all excited about? Tina said letters. Rhea says matching. Courtney says matching. Yes, y'all. We have to double these gifts in 2024. I said 2024. Fundraise some more. Okay. I love it. Thank you so much, Holly. You are the best. And you're going to stick around and answer some questions, right? That's true. If y'all have product questions, drop those in the q and I'll be answering those throughout the webinar, but thanks for letting me be here. I love it. Thanks so much, Holly. Bye. All right, y'all. I told you today is a day of giving, okay? Tis the season. And y'all, we have the ultimate end of year fundraising checklist for you, okay? So we have an amazing download. All you have to do is scan that QR code and we are gonna download it for you. Anna dropped it as well in the chat. And y'all, listen, we're Give Butter. We're here to serve and we are gonna bless you. So make sure you download that end of year fundraising checklist. Remember y'all, 10% of all giving happens in the last three days of the year. And 30% of all um, giving happens in this month alone, okay? So don't miss out. Out, get your piece of the pie, scan this um, QR code, and let's keep going, okay? All right, y'all. Well, I'm going to get into these stats, okay? We are going to finish 2023 strong. How do you maximize your fundraising momentum in December, y'all? As I mentioned just now, this month is all about the giving, and we are going to get into these details, okay? And for those of you who don't know, our webinars are now CFRE certified. I don't know if y'all heard the news, but we are just moving on up in this world, okay? We are CFRE certified. So if you are, if you're trying to collect your credits, let's get the learning on. So the first thing that I want to encourage you all to do is engage with Live Bunt donors. For those of you who don't know what Live Bunt means, it is last year, but unfortunately not this year, okay? Why is this important? This is so, so, so incredibly important. We already saw the stats from Giving Tuesday, right? We saw that even though donations increased, the number of donors has decreased by 10%. But don't fear, your community is still here. Come on, y'all. I'm going to hit you again with that. Don't fear. Your community is still here. All right. Now is the time to start engaging with the donors who haven't given again to, you, to your organization this year. How do you do that? Well, we're going to break it all the way down. But another thing that I want to mention before we go into the tactics is it's so incredibly important to re-engage donors who haven't given already because a couple of things. One, it's easier to connect with them. It's easier to connect with your donors. A lot of times when we're reaching out to brand new donors, we have to do new tactics, new social media things. We have to spend more money, right? But when you're re-engaging your donors, a lot of times it's just an email. It's a phone call, right? It's also a higher likelihood of them giving to you again. If somebody already knows your organization and you've been doing the work to cultivate them, remember y'all, all of our webinars we've been talking about, cultivation is key. Cultivation is key. So if you've been doing the work to cultivate them all throughout the year, now is the perfect time to re-engage them. And it's still not too late to cultivate them. You can start sending them messages and say, here's what we've done since last December, or here's what we've done since the last time you've made your gift. And the most important thing is showing the impact. Showing the impact is going to be really, really, really important. So let's go into the details on how. So first, you're going to open up your GiveButter account, okay? And you're going to go into the CRM. You're going to dive deep into track. 
And you're gonna make a live bunch report of your own. You can actually pull a segment in your CRM that has the live bunch or the side bunch um, features already pre-made for you. And then what I want you to do is I want you to divide them, divide them into segments based on donation amount. Why do I want you to base them um, based on donation amount? So then you can craft your messaging accordingly. If a $20, if you know how much $20 means to your organization, you're going to send crafted messages to those $20 donors. If you know how much $100, is, $1,000 donors, whatever it is, I want you to craft your messaging based on the donation amount. Next, you're going to divide them into a segment based on what campaign they participated in. So if they're a regular recurring donor, or if they got involved with your end of year campaign last year, or if they came to specific events, why? Because again, you're going to tailor the messaging accordingly. Everything is about tailoring. I always say people are your partners, not your piggy banks. Yes, we are asking them for money, but guess what? What I always say, relationship first, and then the revenue comes. Community first, and then the currency comes. People first, and then the profit comes. Y'all hear me? So that's why it's about crafting the messaging. You want to tell them this is exactly what has happened since the last campaign you participated in. Thank you so much for becoming a recurring donor. Thank you so much for getting involved in our end of year campaign last year. Make it specific. The more specific you are, the more you will see yourself soar. Okay. Then you want to track which donors converted and gave again. How do you do this? In Give Butter, y'all, I'm giving you the ultimate fundraising checklist and the ultimate Give Butter checklist. So if you haven't downloaded Give Butter, please do yourself a favor. But in Give Butter, you know we have revenue tracking emails. So if you send an email in Engage in your Give Butter platform, if you put the specific fundraising campaign link in your in your email, you can actually track and see how many people clicked. You can track and see how many people donated. You can track and see how many people um. Uh, made a donation and how much you were able to raise. Why is that important? Because if you start to see which campaigns are performing better, guess what you're going to do? You're going to start doubling down on that specific campaign and that specific target group. You're going to reach out to those people again and making sure you can, you're seeing high conversion rates. Okay. And then of course, I always mention this, but always follow up and say, thank you. Always follow up and say, thank you. Always reach out. Always, and you know, give it a review, the automatic messages, but go the extra mile. Say thank you again for your $50 donation. Send them a phone call, right? Let's keep going. We just talked about this, but donor thank you calls um, and thank you cards are not out of style, okay? A lot of times people say, ain't nobody answer the phone. Actually, Research shows that the first time don first time donors who receive a thank you note within 48 hours are giving four times more. They're more likely to give to your organization again. And and you're now building rapport with them on a deeper level. People want to know that their gift matters. They want to know that they're making an impact with their organization. They want to know that what they're doing is resonating. So making the ask, reaching, picking up the phone, saying thank you immediately. And something that's also happened to me in real time was a donor made an online gift. I actually called them on the phone and said, thank you. They made an additional $500 gift while I was on the phone. People want to know that what they are doing matters. Someone just asked, can you ask for funds in more than one project? Yes, I think what you mean by that is, can you ask for funds to go to multiple different things? Absolutely, why not? The most important thing is showing what the impact is. So if the impact, if they wanna get involved in different funds or if they wanna get involved in different programs, 100%, that goes a long way, okay? And something that I'll also say is, a lot of times people are worried, are they sending too many emails? So let's break this down. The way that you actually be able to know and understand if you're sending too many emails is not based on the amount of emails you're sending. Look at a couple of things. Look at what your open rate is. So the average email open rate in the nonprofit sector hovers between 25% and 29%. So if your open rates are higher than that, you're doing a good job. If your open rates are lower than that, then let's start. That, that still doesn't mean that you're sending too many emails. It could mean a lot of things. It could mean you want to you try different subject lines. It could mean you want to do different segmenting. We just talked about segmentation, right? Segmentation leads to success. So it doesn't necessarily mean you're sending too many emails. What I would actually pay attention to is 
Is my click-through rate go, um, going down and my open rate going down? If that's the case, then you, you wanna, there are different strategies that you can try and see, okay? But the thing that I always say is don't worry about sending too many emails. Do you think Amazon is worried about sending too many emails, y'all? Let me tell you they're not. And guess what? I'm still buying, okay? My card still lets me know that I'm purchasing, all right? So don't worry about it. You, there's so many different things that you can do. And also remember, people want to be a blessing. They want to get involved. They want to support your organization. If you're doing your job of communicating the impact, then they're going to do their job of supporting the impact. All right? Let's keep going. The next thing that I want to encourage you all to do is automate your communications. I want to go a little bit quickly so we can have time for, for the most creative campaigns. But after you filter your Libund and Cybund donors, another thing that you can do is schedule your emails. Did you all know that you could schedule emails in GiveButter? Let me see in the chat. Who's done? Who's tried the scheduling email features? I want to see it in the chat. Who's done it? I love it. Yes. Oh, Amanda, come on now. We need to work on that. Chandra, Ma <laughs> thank you, Max. I love it. Okay, good. I'm about to call y'all up here yourself and let me know. Julie, oh, come on, Juliana. I'm gonna show you, girl. I'm gonna call you. We're gonna figure this out. Y'all, scheduling emails is key, okay? It is key. Go into engage. What did I say at the beginning of this? 10% of donations happen at the last three days of the year. You already know when the last three days are, December 29th, December 30th, and December 31st. So what are you going to do after this call? I'm going to need you to go into Engage, and I'm going to need you to schedule your emails for December 29th, December 30th, and December 31st, okay? Those days are going to come. They are going to come no matter what. So schedule in advance. Also, another thing that you can do is you can start doing triggered emails, right? Maybe you have a, a specific designed email anytime someone, send, someone sends you a thank you. You already know that you could customize those emails in GiveButter. So send a thank you, right? Customize that um, and put them into an email series, a, a welcome series, right? Another thing that you could do um, on your website is if a donor um, signs to join your, your, your newsletter or your mailing list, you can put them into a welcome email series. And what is a welcome email series all about? Every single email tells them about your organization. It talks about your impact. It talks about where you're going, right? People want to know where you're going so they can get on that train and go with you. I always say you need to be a bridge, y'all. You're a bridge between where somebody is and the change they want to see in the world. And they need to know that your organization is the vehicle that's going to get them to where they want to be in the world, right? So make sure you put them, you can automate these things and put them into these um, trigger, uh, into these series. And also remember the rule of seven is important. If y'all don't know what the rule of seven is, it's it, pretty much the premise is that someone needs to see something on average seven times before making an action. They need to see something seven times before taking an action. That means you can reach out to them about making a donation. Why did we, in October, what did I tell y'all to do? Send to save the date. I said, send to save the date. Send out cards. Put it on your social media. Do it in a video. It doesn't mean you're just sending them seven emails, right? But you're crafting you're crafting the, the infrastructure for them to be able to, to, to engage seven different times. I always say our job as organizations, we have to create space for transformation to take place. We have to create space for transformation to take place. So if you know what your goal is, what are all the different touch points? Are you sending them a letter? Are you sending them a thank you card? Are you doing a phone call? Are you on social media? Are you doing an email? Are you doing a video, right? There are lots and lots of different ways that you can do the same message. So then that way your people feel they're immersed in your messaging. And social media. Did y'all know Canva lets you schedule social media posts? Let me, Canva let you schedule social media posts, y'all, especially at nonprofits. Y'all can get Canva for nonprofits. Take advantage of these things. See, y'all didn't know. See, come on now. Floyd, Floyd Jones, I live to serve. Come on now. Sign up for Canva. And also, you know, Canva integrates directly with GiveButter. So you can utilize all the different features. Use the tools that you're already using to make your life easier. You also can utilize things like Hootsuite, Buffer, Spout Social, or you can schedule the post in the app. You can schedule your posts in the app. A lot of times we get our own anxiety. We get anxiety because there's so many things to do. I don't know about y'all, but sometimes when I get stressed out, what do I do? I go on my phone. I go to my couch and I just sit myself down. I said, you know what? This is just too much. I'm gonna have to resign today. And sometimes that's okay. 
Sometimes that's okay. However, we can actually take the steps now to get ahead of the overwhelm. We can take the steps now to get ahead of the overwhelm, all right? And another thing that I would encourage you to do, use platforms like Linktree or like a LinkedIn bio app of some sort where you can track the clicks. I keep going back to things like track your conversion rates and track your open rates, but I always say the data is going to tell you the details you need to know. The data is going to tell you the details that you need to know. So if you have a link in your bio, or if you have a link tree, you can actually see which campaigns are getting the highest clicks. Why is that important? Because if you know which campaigns are getting the highest clicks, then you can put those into your social media feed. You can feature it in your social media feed. You can run ads on that campaign. You can send targeted emails about that campaign, right? So all of these different things are going to go a long, long, long way. And the last thing that I would say before we jump into our the final segment is expand your partnerships. That is so, so, first of all, we already just talked about matching. Come on, somebody, matching gifts. Thank you to Jesse and the whole product team. We are launching corporate, ma we're launching um, matching gifts on the platform. So now you can take advantage of that. And I'm so excited for y'all to see it. We already took a look at it, y'all. You are going to love it. But pretty much you're gonna be able to input the match into the platform and people will see it directly. And you can send campaign updates to all of your people. People love, they love matches. Why do they love matches? Because people love momentum. People love momentum. So there's actually research that shows that people are more likely to donate more to your campaign when you have a progress bar on your campaign page. If they see that you're close to your goal, they're more likely to donate even more. So a matching gift is going to make them give even more, right? We People love momentum. So it's our job to make your own momentum, y'all. Make your own momentum. Engage your corporate partners. Also engage your board members, engage your high um, your um your uh high givers, right? Now is the time. You also can um utilize auction items from corporate partners or employee fundraising drives. Now is the time, y'all. I hope this is encouraging y'all. Do you have some ideas for the end of the year? I, I want to see each and every one of you go to the finish line. And y'all, my favorite thing is when you shoot me an email or you shoot me a DM somewhere and you let me know, hey, I use this tip and now we reached our goal, y'all. I want to see that for each and every one of you, okay? I want to see that for each and every one of you. So make sure you're putting these tips into action. All right. So I want to make sure that we have enough time. So we are now going to get to our most creative campaigns. And one of the things that I love about each and every one of these campaigns, y'all, is that we saw them utilizing some of these features. They brought their, their community together. They segmented their community. They knew who came to their events and their campaigns in the previous season. They got them involved again. And y'all, y'all are going to love it and y'all are going to be inspired. Before we, we, we announce our first one, I want to shout out our most active campaigns. We had over 20 different most active campaigns, y'all. They all got a donation of um, uh, $500 from GiveButter. And one thing I want to let you all know is that this has nothing to do about the amount, right? It's not about how much they raised. It's how many people they mobilized. It's not about how much they raise, it's about how many people they mobilize. So some most active campaigns had 50 donors within a time block, right? So you don't, a lot of times we get into our own heads. We get into our own heads and I'll never be able to make a donation. I'll never be able to get an award. I don't have enough people. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it because you are enough. It starts with you understanding that you are enough. And when you believe that you are enough, you're going to show up. And I always say, when you show up, watch how your community shows up for you. When you show up, watch how your community shows up for you. And so our most active campaigns, they did it. And our most creative campaigns did it. And before we get in, I also want to say a special thank you to all of our judges. Y'all, thank you to our judges. One thing that I want to let you guys know, another thing is we didn't um, pick the winners this year. Give but our staff and give but our employee. We did not pick the winners. Our people picked the winners. And moving forward, that's how we're going to do it. We actually got past Give Butter Gives Back winners to actually be the judges. And so I am so excited because these winners were picked by each and every one of you. Okay? All right, y'all. Enough vamping. I'm on my Ryan Seacrest today. So we're going to give our first um, most creative campaign a shot. And I'm so, so excited. Can we get a little drum roll, please? Uh, the first most creative campaign winner is 
the Lao Conservation Trust for Wildlife. Y'all, they ended up having over 439 supporters and raising over $38,000. I want to see hearts. I want to see cheers all in the chat. Is someone from the Lao Conservation Trust for Wildlife here? Can I see, uh, can I see them up here? Let's see. Hopefully it's working. Here we go. I see Jeremy. Hey, oh, sorry. All right. Hi, everyone. Hello. Thank you. Hello. <laughs> Jeremy, congratulations. And who is with you? I'm with Jasmine. Hello, ja oh, Jasmine and Jeremy. I love That's it. what's up. That's what's up. That's I what's love up. it. That's I love it. And we match it with the blue. We match it with the blue. I love uh, it. Uh -huh. <laughs> Y'all, tell us a little bit about your organization. Tell us about your mission. And tell us a little bit about this, about this campaign. All right. So uh, our organization, our mission is that we rescue, rehabilitate, and release native wildlife that has been affected by the illegal wildlife trade in Laos. Mm. Uh, in addition, we aim to improve wildlife education and welfare within the country uh, with the goal of fostering sustainable coexistence between humans and animals. And actually, Jasmine and I are in Laos right now, and it's 2 a.m., so we are trying to match your energy, Floyd, because we are tired. Oh my goodness, you we don't need to sleep. I, well, I hope this is a good sweet dream for you. I hope this is oh, a good dream. Oh, we are so dream. excited. This is amazing, yes. I love it. Tell us a little bit, how is this, how is, um, this uh, donation going to be able to help your organization? So we got news earlier this year that we actually have to move the entire rescue center to a new site. And so we have to fundraise to raise a ton of money to do new infrastructure. I'm talking water, service roads, electricity. We have to move 200 animals. We have to build all new enclosures, education center, all of that. Uh, so this $5,000 is extremely helpful. And we're so grateful that we were chosen uh, by the judge, this panelist. So yeah, well worth waking up at 2 a.m. No worries here. I love that. I love that so much. I love, well, thank you all so, so much. Jasmine, did you want to say anything? Uh, no, I'm just here always supporting Jeremy and this this incredible organization. So um, this money is incredibly impactful here in Laos. A dollar mm -hmm. goes a very long way. So this is going to be hugely impactful for our animals. We are currently building enclosures um, as we speak, actually, our maintenance team is sleeping, but uh, <laughs> soon in a few hours, yeah, yeah, be back at it. So, well, I'm so happy for you, and I'm so glad that you are in the Give Better community. Y'all are doing amazing things and amazing work, and I'm so glad we, so glad that we can partner with you all this year. Thank you so much. Thank you all so much. Have a good one. Okay. All right. You too. Y'all, can y'all give it up one more time for the Lao Conservation Trust, y'all? That was incredible. That was incredible. They are doing Im more important and impactful work. And I'm so excited that we at Get Better get to partner with them and get to partner with each and every one of you all. This is incredible. Okay, y'all, I am so excited for our next winner. All right, so this organization launched an amazing campaign this year, which I was absolutely blown away by. It was called Celebrate Girl Power, okay? And they brought together their community. They told stories. They were able to raise money for um, a lot of different programs. So y'all, I'm gonna just bring them up so they can tell you the story because I don't wanna butcher it, y'all. The next most creative campaign is She's the First. Can we see she's the first? Is she the first on up here? I love it. Tamika said, love girl power. Me too. I love that. Is she the first in the house? Kayla. Hi. Can you see Hello. me? Hello. Hello. So excited to be here and just thank you so much. Um, I'm like so energized by the vibe in this room. Uh, we are so grateful. I can't wait to tell my team. She's the First is an international girls' rights nonprofit. We work hard so that girls everywhere have an opportunity to get an education, to choose their own future, whatever that looks like for them. We operate in 42 countries 
And our goal next year is to serve 170,000 girls. And so this $5,000 will go directly to our programs where we put feminist mentors in front of girls who need support the most. We teach girls how to use their voices in their homes, in their schools, in their communities, mm. so that they can get what they need to, again, choose their own future, to determine their destiny. So just thank you. I'm so excited. Oh, wow, that's so amazing. You all had over 275 supporters. Talk to us. How did y'all, how did y'all make <laughs> that happen? Like what? This was our biggest Giving Tuesday in our 14 year history. Wow. So absolutely huge for us. Um, we started off by partnering with our biggest corporate partner, um, Bobby Brown Cosmetics, who had an oh my employee gosh. donation day. And so they got the employees at their headquarters to give donations on site. So when we emailed our supporters to ask for Giving Tuesday donations, they saw donations pouring in and were super inspired. Mm. And then out of that, we were so excited. One of our board members saw everyone being super engaged on the campaign and called in and asked if we would like him to submit a match donation. So we were able to have a match donation that was a complete surprise for all of us midday, which again helped push the momentum to finish out. And again, we were just blown away by the support. And Give Butter, we really appreciated um, all the engagement from your team that day, for everyone rooting us on, and also the platform itself, being able to connect immediately with all of our donors made it so fun. That's so incredible. I have a question for you, Kayla. What encouraged and inspired you to get in, involved with She's the First? Uh, well, I've always been a feminist. I've always been committed to justice. Mm. Um, part of my why is my mom was a teen mm. mom. She didn't get to finish school. She did not get to go to college. My grandmother also didn't get to finish her education. I was the first person in my entire family on both sides to get a college education. So I know exactly how life transforming getting an education and pursuing your goals can be. So mm. I want all girls around the world to have these types of opportunities to go as far as their potential will let them. Mm, mm, come on, somebody. Can we can we just give it up for Kayla in the chat? Because what? Yeah. One thing that really oh, struck me, Kayla is the power of knowing your story, knowing where you came from, honoring where you came from and saying, I'm going to take this baton and go the next step. And not only are you going the next step for yourself, but you're going the next step for girls all around the world. And that is so incredibly powerful. And so I want to say thank you. I want to say I see you. I want to say I'm standing with you and Give Butter is standing with you as well. Thank you so much, Floyd. And thank you everyone for all the love in the chat. Yes. Thank you, Kayla. Yes. I'll talk to you soon. Y'all, that was incredible. Okay. Are y'all feeling it already? Because I know I am. Come on now. Natalie said, what a message. I know that's right. Also, a couple of things that really stood out to me about their campaign, and I know Anna dropped the link in the chat, using their corporate partner, right? T tapping into a corporate partner to stand up and stand in. A couple of you, I, I just mentioned it in our last um, our last tip before we started getting into the campaigns. It's now is the time. We have a few more weeks left. Even if you think, okay, I don't have a Bobby Brown Cosmetics or I don't have somebody. Well, who's in your neighborhood? Who's in your community? A lot of times we don't think that we have other people, but the people are right around the corner. I always say that people are ready to get involved, but we have to be the ones to ask. We have to be the ones to ask. The keys, the keys, are right here, all right? You are the key to a change. You are a key to a different trajectory. And so, and I think Kayla and the rest of the team at She's a First just displayed that. So that was amazing and so beautiful. Thank you so much, Kayla and the She's the First team. Y'all, this next campaign blew us away. They ended up having over 1.4 thousand supporters. 1,400 supporters, y'all. We were blown away. We were like, what is, what? What child is this? Okay. I was amazed. And they ended up raising over $81,000. We were completely blown away. I'm going to bring them up right now to tell a little bit more of their story. But y'all, with no further ado, please help me welcome to the stage the Phoenix Rising FC Youth Soccer. 
Let's see it. William. Hey, how's it going? Hello, congratulations. Wow, awesome. What a surprise. <laughs> That's uh, that's so great. This has been really cool and and educational. I can't believe uh, that we uh, we were selected as one of the as the, one of the winners. That's great news. That's amazing. Okay, so walk us through your campaign. Y'all had something called the Holla Dash. First of all, I said Holla Back because that's a great name. Okay, but you had a Holla Dash. You had an event. You brought your youth together. You brought parents together. Tell us tell us about this and tell us about your organization. Yeah, it was a it was a big event. We had um, almost two thousand people out at the event. Um, uh, Northern Arizona University is one of the big sponsors, and uh, we host a couple runs on the on the day for uh, for players from across the different ages. And uh, yeah, it's just a really fun day. That we put some of our coaches in a dunk tank, and the kids get to try to throw balls at them and put them in the water. So it ends up being this really great event. And, and obviously, the the money we raise funds uh, fun soccer experiences for kids that can't afford it, right? So we have almost 10,000 players across the, the the Phoenix Valley area. Um, and, and you know, obviously, in order to give access to as many kids as possible, it, you know, we, we want to be able to provide financial aid. So so this is one of our biggest fundraisers every year that that helps fund that program for kids. I love that. I love that. How long have you been involved with um with the Phoenix Rising FCU soccer? I myself have been here for three years um, wow. and I I brought Give Butter to us. So this this event, Give Butter, has been a bit of a success story. See, for now us. everyone's going to be saying this guy has ideas. Yeah, well, I got one right at least, huh? Um, and uh, but yeah, we've we've more than tripled our our fundraising efforts on this event specifically with uh, with the use of Give Butter. And actually, this image that you guys put up is a great image. Uh, those two players are both players that went through our professional academy and are on professional contracts now. So they uh, professional they, soccer uh, contracts. Yeah, so we have we have a couple different tiers within the organization. We have like a, a youth club tier which is much more experience based and then I, mean, I actually coach and uh, as part of our platforms program where we're trying to build players to to go into the professional ranks and and those two boys are two of our success stories that both got on professional academy contracts last year so it's so uh it services simple. all kinds of players and all kinds of families uh, uh across the valley that is so powerful okay so let me get this straight you coach you know tech platforms you fundraise you organize events you got a lot of hats okay how are you doing all of the things well we uh we we all have to do a couple different jobs here right when you work in a nonprofit, as as i'm sure many people on this call know um there, there's always a lot of things to get done and there's not always somebody who it's their specific job to do it so me and all of my colleagues here everybody everybody wears multiple hats everybody coaches everybody does something off the field too from from logistics organization i we have three major fundraisers i only run one of them so wow. um so there's everyone here does a ton of different a ton of different jobs and and, and i'm just i'm just part of the crew so I love it. I have a couple more questions for you, William. What would you tell everybody? Because right now we see the stats all across the country, right? We see that the, the number of donors are decreasing and whatnot, but I'm looking at your campaign and I'm like, the, it's hot over there. It's hot in Phoenix, all right? And I'm not just talking about the temperature, all right? I'm seeing you guys have team leaderboards, you have team members. What have you guys been doing to mobilize your community? Yeah, so engagement is a really big piece for us, and and actually all the metrics that we pull are are super helpful. So I I'm able to 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 make sure that I can tell individual coaches, and then we have branches with directors of coaching. So basically, we're we're going through our our leadership team into our individual coaches, who are then communicating out with their families. Uh, so the message is coming at our donors from a lot of different angles, and then obviously we utilize donors that uh, we've built from years previously. So. Um, this is our third year using the platform, like I said, and and all the engagement functions are are really helpful. Um, but we, you know, we we speak to the players at the fields, you know, after yeah. training sessions. We uh, we speak to the families. We we obviously at the event. There's a um, we get to talk about it a lot um, a lot there, and so the event itself drives engagement for the following year when when people are excited about it and have a good time there. So we're we're using as many different. Um, engagement platforms as we possibly can we we have actually she's sitting right behind me sarah can wave at you she does our Hello. social media she does our social media stuff and has done a great job with with getting uh info out about this as well as everything else that we do with the club so we're we're running it from as many angles as we can and and give butter is a great um a great platform for us 
I love that. Thank you so much, William. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate you. And I love all that you are doing with the Hala Dash. And we're so happy to be able to support and, and see you guys continue to thrive and grow. Well, thanks so much, Floyd. It means a lot to, to be recognized. And we really appreciate you guys. And we'll be seeing you around. All right. Shout out, William, y'all. Let's see it in the chat. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. One of the things that I loved that William just mentioned is that this was a multi-pronged approach. There was a strategy here. If you guys, I know Anna dropped the link in the chat, but we can easily see things like they, they have a team leaderboard. People can actually get involved and sponsor some of the youth directly. They can actually sponsor the youth directly. They have videos on their campaign page. So it really takes a village. It has multiple people involved. They engage people in multiple different um, um, facets and whatnot. So that was absolutely wonderful and really, really incredible to see. Um, and, and another thing that I want to encourage you all is that they are continuing to grow. They are continuing to grow. And Laura Lynn says, you made the goal. Amen. I heard that. Exactly. They're continuing to grow. And so there is hope and there is excitement and there's opportunity for each and every one of us on this call. All right, y'all. We have two more people left to go. And I'm super excited to share this next one. This next campaign had over 433 supporters, and they actually raised over $68,000. And it was so beautiful to witness and see that they had videos on their story directly from parents that they've been able to impact, directly from people who've been participated in their program, and it was absolutely beautiful to see. So y'all, with no further ado, the next organization is... Foster Village Charlotte. Do we have Foster Village Charlotte in the house? Yes, hi. Becky. Hi. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh man. That's oh my, my gosh. Right there. How sweet. Tell <laughs> us a little bit about your organization. Tell us about this campaign. I love it because it's Foster Village Charlotte and your campaign was called Foster the Movement. I love it. Tell us about it. Yeah, for sure. So um, we are an organization that was founded by myself and others who were foster parents looking for support and community. Um, so founded about five years ago. So we meet urgent needs for kids that first come into care and then also provide educational and emotional support for the caregivers. And this year we expanded to um, a second center that allowed us to wrap around the reunifying family. So the kids that get to uh, be reunited with their family, having a dignified space to do that in. And so, um, yeah, this campaign was really fun because we spoke a lot about the emotions that we wanted people to feel when they walk mm. into our center. So joy, connection, comfort, dignity is what we believe every person um, who is experiencing foster care really deserves. And so um, it was a really fun way to highlight it this year. I love that. First of all, can we talk about intention? We talk a lot about intention. That's one of the things that's so incredibly important to me. And you are saying, how do I want our people to feel? How do we want our community to feel when they step into our centers? And not only do they feel it in your center, but they're clearly feeling it on your Give Butter page. Okay, we love that. I love it. You said that you were one of the founders of the organization. Tell us a little bit about your story. What, what, what encouraged you, inspired you to start getting involved and bring this to fruition? Yeah, so I became a foster parent in 2016 and pretty quickly realized that um, I needed support. The things that I thought was going to be hard see, were kind of easy. The things that I thought would be easy was incredibly difficult. And mm -hmm. we didn't have a support system here in Charlotte to make sure that foster parents were meeting each other, that could support each other. Those that were ahead of um, their fostering experience could double back and talk to us about what it looked like. Um, and so we kind of set out to bring that to our city and um, have been doing it ever since, yeah. I love that. My question to you, because we are seeing the fundraising grow, okay, over these past five years, but how okay. have you grown over these past few years? Oh, man, that's a hard one. You know, I think for me, it is an act of vulnerability each mm. campaign because we've been doing Fashion the Movement for the last couple of years. And every year I say, oh, it's not going to work this year because of these variables, or it's not going to work this year because of these variables. And so I think for me, I've grown in my ability to say I'm making 
I'm making great content because we're doing great things. And mm. the people that find us, if we're able to plan well, obviously you have to plan well for it, but it's going to come our way. So I, it's an act of, you know, I'm contributing and, mm. and not living in that scarcity model and knowing that people are going to circle back and support us. And honestly, our foster parents are some of our best fundraisers because Mm -hmm. they're able to share the impact. And so a lot of them are our peer-to-peer fundraisers every year. And so it's, it inspires me over and over again. So every time I feel that urge of like, oh, it's not going to work because, and we've had so many reasons why it might not work, you know, Mm -hmm. a pandemic, uh, you know, economy, all the things, but every single year it has worked because I'm trusting that the things that I'm putting out are going to reflect um, what we're You better say that, Becky. Mm -hmm. I love that. Come on. One thing that I heard that I really want to relay, vulnerability will lead to your victory. Vulnerability will lead to your victory. And not allowing ourselves to live in that scarcity mindset. And not only in your fundraising, but how you show up in your family, how you show up in this organization. And we are all living in your ripple, Becky. We are mm-hmm. living in your ripple. Thank you so much for standing up. And thank you so much for saying yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. My last question to you, you had mentioned that there were so many reasons why it couldn't work. How do you feel now that we've been <laughs> able to make a $5,000 donation? It's huge. It is huge for our organization, for sure. Um, it feels so empowering and also humbling. Um, the season, the holiday season always, unfortunately, brings more kids into foster care. And so just mm-hmm. being able to know that we can meet those urgent needs with dignity, we don't ever provide gently used items. They're all new straight to kids. Wow. Um, and so, yeah, the impact of this is is huge. And shout out to Holly, who has been my contact this whole time. Um, she's always just, um, you know, checking in on us and we've scheduled meetings with her over the last couple of years. So it's been really fun to learn this platform and to keep adding on new strategies. I'm so happy for you, Becky. Thank you so much. I said that was my last question, but I actually have one other question. I noticed that you have sponsors and you have a bunch of team members. How are you all able to mobilize all of this? What does it mean that, you know, our people listening can can utilize? Yeah. So I think of the campaign as in two chunks. The first month is recruiting my fundraisers. And then the second month is actually the actual campaign. So the whole first month in October, typically I'm recruiting our fundraisers. And then what we do is kind of a launch and I prepare a PDF that has um, best practices for them. Um, But then also we give them a lot of content. So we do videos and impact quotes Mm. um, and it lives in that fundraising PDF and they can click into the icons that brings them to the folders that they can download. And then I'm walking them through that during the campaign of how to utilize that. Um, And then also doing that on my actual Foster Village Charlotte, you know, social media page so that they can reshare if they're not comfortable in technology. Mm. They just reshare what we do. Um, but I have found that to be really empowering because then people pull what they pull. So this year it was things on joy, things on connection, things on comfort, things on dignity, and whatever word kind of gravitated towards them. We saw that that was something that they use. So I really think is of the campaign in two chunks. I love that so much. Becky, thank you so much. Can y'all give it one more round of applause? One more love in the chat for Becky. You are doing incredible work, Becky. And we are so grateful, so thankful. And I'm just grateful to keep watching you all rise, okay? Thank you. Thank you, Floyd. Thank you so much. Thank you. Y'all, did y'all hear that? Not only, she said the first month was spent with the recruitment and then the last month was spent in actually doing the campaign, right? And one thing that I heard that was so incredibly important, a toolkit. They made it easy. Remember, friction is not your friend when you are fundraising. Friction is not your friend. So if you want to bring fundraisers around, if you want to bring sponsors around, if you want to bring partners around, you need to make sure that it is easy for them to get involved. Get them a toolkit, encourage them, and make it easy for them to get involved. And then last but not least, lean into your vulnerability because vulnerability will lead to your victory, okay? If Becky didn't show it, our campaign will show it, okay? Well, thank you so much, Becky, and thank you so much to all of our other winners. Y'all, we have one more winner, one more, but you know what? We actually have more winners because even though this campaign is our final most creative campaign, every single person on this call is a winner, okay? Every single one of you is a winner. You showed up, you're a winner. You launched a campaign, you're a winner. Did y'all know we had almost 2,000 people apply this year? Almost 2,000. 
thousand. That is craziness, but it's also amazingness, right? So don't let macroeconomics scare you. Don't let the, the research scare you. Keep standing in your truth. And when you stand, again, watch how we all stand with you, okay? Our last campaign of the day, y'all. This one blew all of us away. Not just because it was a, 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 a really unique and catchy event, but it was the energy. We could see the energy in their videos. We could see the energy in how their people showed up and were making donations. We could see how their people were showing up online and social media and just sharing. It was so incredibly beautiful. And they had over 240 supporters and raised over $15,000. Our final winner for today is, drum roll please, Ball for a Cure. Do we have the Ball for a Cure folks on this call? Do I see? Hello, hello. Hey, Floyd. Max, hello. So excited to be here and so excited to be an honor to be amongst all the nonprofits that were chosen today. Uh, so awesome. Can stealing congratulations i'm so excited y'all for those of you who don't know and you're gonna check it out but from my understanding y'all were just a group of friends who started this organization and we're like let's play some sports let's go bowling and let's raise some money tell us a little bit about your organization yeah exactly you, you almost nailed it right on the head there so i'm one of uh nine co-founders that are a part of ball for a cure and i know the guys are on the call so they should be dropping their names in the chat and, and giving a cheer there. Um, but yeah, Ball for a Cure is so special because we're a completely volunteer board-based organization that really has a mission to unite communities in supporting the patients and families of pediatric cancer. Uh, and we started back in 2015 when we were just seniors in high school getting ready to go to uh, college and we wanted to leave a momentum aspect uh, as we kind of carried and left town, but always bringing us back to uh, our roots. So incredible. What inspired you to get involved? Because when I was a senior in high school, I was talking about, let me go ahead and get my, my little Bed Bath & Beyond sheets uh, for college. So what what got you, what inspired you? Yeah, I think it was a mix of um, some friends in school that were suffering from cancer, but as well as as we left and went to school, we wanted to make sure that we could always go back to town um, and have this social camaraderie aspect of bringing everyone together and continue to grow our community through some awesome, um, some awesome events. Um, we're at the point where we're doing about six events a year, a golf tournament, basketball, bowling. Um, we did a, a concert for the last couple of years and it's really great. And again, that root of our mission is about uniting communities. And we have really focused in and found a path of using sports as well as social camaraderie to uh, do that together. I love that. What has inspired, what has surprised you most since getting this organization started? I think it's really, it's first thing is the team that's involved. The nine guys, no matter it's uh, our day jobs or whatever else we do, we continue to meet on a weekly basis and continue to work and grow this organization. So the efforts that these this group has been putting in, but then also the action that we've empowered our community to come out and help us grow as well um, mm -hmm. because we put on these awesome events for them to come and support a really great cause they come back to us and know that they can we can call on them for actions like we did on give butter to uh, help us uh, grow and, and eventually win this this awesome campaign i love that if you could say one thing to your community what would it be um aside from just thanks <laughs> i mean it it's it's really about that that thank you and and that growth of of where they've gone and how mm. they've brought it together. Um, I think the power of giving and the power of thanks are so evident in the last uh, campaign that we did, and we can't thank our group enough, and we can't wait to see them at the next event that we have. I love that. I love that so much, Max. Thank you. And one of the things that I, I always say, community really is your catalyst. And one thing that I've noticed in your videos and your, your messaging is that you are building for belonging. You are building for belonging. People, yes, they're getting involved, but they also feel like they're, they are involved with, with your community. And that is what is so incredibly important. So thank you so much, Max. I know everyone is going to be leaving here inspired as, as much as I am from the work that y'all are doing. Yeah, thanks again so much. Happy to be part of the bread making community.
Oh, he did that. Come on, Max. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Thanks so much, Max. Okay, fam. I am going to give away some unique custom swag. First of all, let's do one more um, congratulations to all of our winners. I want to see it in the chat. Show some hearts. Show some loves. We love that. We're so proud of you, each and every one of you. You're doing incredible and amazing things. Thank you for inspiring us and thank you for inspiring your community. So at the end of the day, that is what this is all about, okay? I just touched on it before. I talked about it on LinkedIn a few days ago, but it's so important that we remember to build for belonging because when you build for belonging, you are building believers and believers will carry you further than any donation could ever carry you, okay? Some of these people on this call today said they've been doing their campaigns for two, three, four, five years, and now they're seeing the growth. Keep going, keep digging the well, keep tilling the soil, keep planting the seeds because before you know it, it is gonna spring up into the biggest tree that you have ever seen in your life. And you're gonna be like, where'd that come from? Okay, and I, you're gonna come back to Floyd and say, remember when you told me? <laughs> Y'all, I wanna choose two, uh, three people. Why not? Tis the season. I'm gonna get, we're gonna give away three custom swag, okay? And let me see, I'm gonna take a picture in here so we can make sure we get your names. Uh, all right, who wants swag? Who wants swag? Let's see it. Let's see it. Let's see it. All right. Our first winner will be, let me write this down before I forget, Yvonne Hawk. Yvonne Hawk. Our team is going to message you, and we're going to get some information from you so we can send you your swag. Let's pick two more people before the call is over. Let's pick two. Roberta. Roberta. Get her. G-E-B-H-A-R-D, Roberta. And then let's pick one more. Nico Die. Nico Die. Y'all, we got three amazing people. You know what? One more. One more. Marissa. Let's do Marissa Markowski. Marissa Markowski. Y'all, tis the season. If you don't hear from me, it means you changed your name and you're not the same name you registered as, but just DM me and I will make sure that you get your swag this week, okay? Y'all, scan this QR code for our end of year fundraising checklist. I can't believe, it's so hard to say goodbye. Cue the Andre Bocelli. It's so hard to say goodbye, but y'all, in case I haven't said it before and in case you haven't heard from me before, I'm so proud of you. I'm rooting for you. I love each and every one of you. You are truly one of the best parts of for me of working here and i can't wait to see how you succeed in the rest of 2023 and y'all 2024 get ready for some more okay i will see y'all in january for our next webinar have a good one and blessings to each and every one of you have a good one y'all thank you